Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have the same problem as we had in the previous video with the difference is that we're going to vary the force and then see how the angle here changes. We're going to start with a force of zero newtons. So we pull on the cable with a force of zero newtons. We expect the cable to hang straight down like this. But how do we prove that and how does that angle change as we're increasing the force on that cable in the horizontal direction? Well, again, we're going to use this relationship here. Here's the angle theta. It's, it was 60 degrees, so let's go ahead and call that the general angle theta, like this. We can then say that the tangent of the angle theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. That would be the weight per unit length times the length of the cable divided by the force, which is the tension at the lower end of the cable. Now, in the previous video, we had found the length of the cable, and let's see if I remember what that was. We had S is equal to 17 point, and I'll have to look it up because I can't remember. Uh, six, seven meters. All right, so we don't have to calculate that again. We did that in the previous video. So here what we're going to do is we're going to take solve for theta because after all we're going to plug in different values for the force and we're going to expect different values for the angle theta which means that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the ratio of the weight per unit length times the length of the cable divided by the force applied. And so as an example this is equal to the arc tangent of let's see W that would be 49 newtons per meter times s that would be go 17.67 divided by 100 if we take the second value now if you plug in a zero here we get basically infinite and what is the arc tangent of infinite well you'll find out if you plug in a very big number and you find the inverse tangent of that you get 90 degrees which of course that's what we expect we expect an angle of 90 degrees when the force is zero but what happens when the force is 100 newtons we then take 49 times 17.67 divided by 100 and then take the arc tangent of that and we get an angle of 83 degrees and you can expect then as you increase the force that the angle would become smaller and smaller and the cable would look more like that. So let's try the next one, 200. So that would be 49 times 17.67 divided by 200. Take the inverse tangent of that and we get an angle of 77 degrees. Let's try 300 newtons and see what we get. 49 times 17.67 divided by 300. Take the inverse tangent and now we get an angle of 71 degrees. Continuing at 400, 49 times 17.67 divided by 400. Inverse tangent, now we get an angle of 65 degrees. How about 500 newtons? 49 times 17.67 divided by 500 and we get an angle, oh we need to find the inverse tangent of that and we get an angle of 60 degrees and that should match what of course we had in the previous problem because we knew the angle was 60 degrees and the force applied was indeed 500 newtons. Let's double it. Let's go to a thousand newtons. 49 times 17.67 divided by five, oh, a thousand, a thousand newtons. Take the inverse tangent of that. Now we have an angle of 41 degrees. It happens when we go to 10,000 newtons, that would be 49 times 17.67 divided by 10,000 equals, take the inverse tangent. Now the angle is only 5 degrees. So you can see when we pull with a force of 10,000 newtons, 20 times the original force of 500 newtons, now the angle is only 5 degrees. And the only, the only force acting downward is simply the weight of the cable. You can see though is that you can never really get the angle to be zero degrees because that would require ultimately an infinite force. So at some point you can see that you will increase the tension to reduce the sag and at some point it's no longer worth it. Any small reduction in the sag would require an enormous amount of force. So when we have hanging cables it's always a balancing act between how much force we want to apply, how much tension we want to put on the cable and how much sag we're willing to live with. 
The more sag, the less the tension in the cable, the less strength the cable has to have. The less the sag, the greater the tension, the greater the strength of the cable has to have, which typically then also requires a heavier cable and it would be more weight. So that's where the balancing act comes in when we're dealing with hanging cables. And that's how we know that.